this is a FTIR uh, flow cell, a uh, infrared uh, flow cell. I work with air sensitive compounds, so we have a solution that's uh, being pressurized with argon or nitrogen, go through the flow cell and out, uh, so inlet, outlet, uh, and then through this window, in this case uh, a sodium chloride window, uh, we use that to uh, uh, collect our data. The problem with collecting data on air sensitive compounds is you get lots of decomposition. I work with iron, manganese, other transition metals that when they decompose they leave lots of residue. This is actually the cell after it's been uh, cleaned up a little bit. So what I'm going to show is how to tear down the cell. When you buy a cell like this, uh, it will have an instruction manual uh, with all the parts and pieces. Right? Uh, so make sure uh, you keep that or, or have, uh, have it uh, for reference, uh, even if you have to look it up online, because it's really easy to uh, forget to put in a spacer or something else. So I'm just unscrewing these connectors, the Luger screw. Uh, now our cell uh, will come apart, so this is you know, one of the, the main body parts. This black mold is to hold the, uh, the whole assembly in place, and now you have to be very careful. Okay, so this is a sodium chloride plate. Uh, it has holes on top and on bottom, so the liquid that you're uh, trying to uh, analyze can, can flow through the cell. This is a Teflon spacer uh, that separates the top cell from the, or the, uh, the top sodium chloride plate from the bottom one. So when you remove this, you want to be very careful because it's, it's literally a fraction of, an, of a millimeter in thickness. All right, so take that, put that there. And then on the bottom, we have another sodium chloride plate and a rubber gasket, or in this case, I think neoprene gasket, uh, that prevents it from uh, basically getting damaged uh, by, uh, by the metal surface that's going to be on. If you notice, there are a couple divots here and here. That's because when I collect data, uh, we uh, have to use a metal cannula or metal syringe uh, so it basically takes a little chunk out of the uh, sodium chloride plate, which is not ideal, but unavoidable. Uh, so now that we've got this entirely disassembled, what you would do is very carefully wipe down uh, the surfaces. Uh, usually I use a little bit of acetone, maybe a drop of water uh, to wipe away the residue and then reassemble everything. Can't stress it enough, this particular plate is sodium chloride. So, if you try and soak it in water or something, it'll start to decompose, it'll start to break up. Uh, there are salt plates that are made of calcium fluoride that are not water soluble, but those are very, very expensive. Uh, so typically, uh, we still use the uh, sodium chloride plates. Uh, now again, you can see corrosion uh, that's uh, essentially, again, from uh, normal usage of the plate where you get uh, iron uh, or other metal stains uh, uh, onto uh, uh, to the plate. So you want to be careful. What I like to do is I also, uh, on these metal parts, these metal threads, uh, I will spray some WD-40 uh, on them and then wipe them down and that helps remove the rust, the, uh, the corrosion, and uh, prevents any of the... Uh, uh, the threads from getting damaged uh, when you when you tighten them back up with these bolts. Uh, so again, this is something that I'm guilty of not doing this type of maintenance on a more regular basis. Uh, I usually just run the cell till there's an issue. But again, uh, even though it might be difficult to see through, uh, the infrared beam can still pass through uh, unobstructed. Uh, the last time I tore the cell down was because to, uh, to, to keep your sample airtight, we use these little uh, rubber uh, seals, SEPTA, that attach like this. Okay, so 
these would be where we place a needle or a cannula through. And the problem is uh, these are very easy to uh, decompose. In other words, as you put that needle through uh, your rubber septa, a small piece of it can come off and clog the cell. And that's what happened to me uh, uh, last week. So that was the first time I tore down the cell in, in two years. Uh, and so uh, it is something just to be aware of that it's, it's very easy. Now, to, to reassemble it, uh, we're going to take, uh, and I like to just go ahead and just put this guy in place. Okay. So we're going to take this. The neoprene gasket is already in position. Just place that there. Okay. Place that. And if the spacer is damaged, uh, it can be replaced. Usually when you buy uh, uh, a set uh, of these flow cells, because they come in pair, or you can buy them in pairs, uh, you'll also buy spare parts, different sizes uh, of gaskets and, and so forth. Uh, so now the top plate goes back on, again very carefully, and now we place this top plate on there, uh, and then we just tighten the bolts. Okay. And there you go. Uh, in this case, I just tore it apart and uh, put it back together without wiping anything down. But like I said, if you uh, had a large amount of uh, some contaminant on here, after you've torn it down, just wipe everything down. Usually acetone or some organic solvent works best, but it depends on what you've contaminated it with. Uh, and if it's something as simple as uh, you have a small chunk of Subaceal stuck in here, because again, what you would do, so place this here, place this here. You would inject your sample from the bottom, you would have a vent needle on top, and then your sample would flow and kind of come out a little bit out of that vent needle, uh, and then you take your cannula and your vent needle out, and now you're ready to collect data uh, through your infrared cell.